In the last video, you saw we transferred the layout from the bottom plate to the underside of these raked top plates. Now you can see that we're just going through and measuring each of the studs and king studs. We just find that this step is worth taking because we're building a wall that's two stories plus a gable. So it's about 25 feet tall. Now here what you can see is we've got a pile of 20 foot two by six on the right, and then I'm taking scrap, and what, while Kyle starts to cut studs and king studs, often what I'll do is cut and assemble the headers and uh, start to cut window packages. Then once he's got enough of the material scattered, then I can start assembling it. So here I'm starting on the left there. That's the two-story high wall that will have uh, rafters land on top of them upstairs. You can see we use four by 10 headers. We put a plate top and bottom, and that's because the walls are two by six thickness and then we have nice full bearing on our uh, cripple studs. My preference is to always start with windows as much as possible. It gives me more room to nail uh, double king studs together and trimmers and just put the whole thing together without having to kick material out of my way. In this case, I ordered 26 LSL material uh, from LP, and that was because we wanted to go two stories plus the gable, double up the kings. It's very dense material, I really don't like it, but it's dead straight and it helps to keep that wall nice and flat as well as stiff when we lift it. So there you can see Kyle just takes the scraps and cuts them into the uh, little cripple studs above the header. Now here you see on the left we have a window for the first floor, then kind of in the middle there is a window on the second floor, then a bathroom window on the first floor, and then that little one on the top right, that's the opening for the fireplace. So we have to keep all of that in mind when we're laying all this out. It's a little tricky too is where I'm at there on the left. That header actually splits where the wall starts the rake. So it's just something we have to take into account when we're lifting the wall. Now here on the right, Kyle's cutting his scrap into 22 and a half inch blocks. And then here we have a full height glue lamb column that runs from the bottom plate all the way up to support the ridge. We find that having that out of a glue lamb keeps it nice and stiff. It's nice and flat so that when we lift it, it just provides extra stiffness. Kyle's just cutting his scrap into blocks that we know we're going to use. Since we're framing 24 on center, those blocks are all cut uh, 22 and 7 16 Always verify though, if you're using LSL, sometimes it's a little thicker. Up here, we're using 4x6 blocking in line with the second floor top plates. So that's our fire blocking. It's also our seam edge blocking for the panel, so panel edge blocking, which we're required to, panel, uh, to block all panel edges for earthquake. We find too that the 4x6 blocking helps to keep that wall nice and stiff when we lift it. Then we just pull 8 foot, since that's the size of the sheeting that we're using. From the center of those blocks, we just pull 8 foot, snap a line, 16 foot, snap a line. And then at the very bottom, Kyle's just cutting all the scrap into blocks in place, that way nobody's measuring. Then what we'll do after the wall's up later is that the very bottom row of blocking will get connected all the way down to the mud cell. And that way our wall sheathing about two feet up from the bottom plate, you see he's cutting there. About two feet up from the bottom plate, we'll use up all of our scrap and then connect from that blocking that I'm nailing right there all the way down to the mud sill. So it makes for a nice connection. It's also a great way to use up all of your scrap on the blocking. We end up with almost zero scrap on these walls. Now here we run all of our sheathing vertically to minimize the amount of blocking that we use. Uh, technically, we only need probably three sheets to meet our shear value, maybe four on that bottom row and a couple up above. Almost 10 times the amount of shear strength in this wall that we need. So we're so far above and beyond that we just line up those seams, makes it nice and easy to tape. There you can see we used a router to cut out all of our window openings. It's very fast and clean, leaves us with perfectly square scrap. And then we route the rake, blow off the wall, don't forget to tape it. In our case, since we're using zip, seat, zip sheathing, we tape it as the last uh, step, and then you can see there, make sure that you always roll the tape. You need to activate the adhesive in that tape. Once it's rolled, then we've got our warranty. So just a couple notes there, as you can see, we've got our flat spot there on the left, up above, and then it goes up to the rake, and then the rake follows all the way down to the first floor. So it's about a 25 or 26 foot tall wall, and it's about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, about 44 feet long.